Hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome to chapter 21 of Bookmarked. Today, we're going to be talking about some of our favorite characters, just characters in general, really, what we think. Oh, no. <laughs> <Start playing. Sorry. laughs> Can you hear yourself? Yeah, I just started on the live. It was in the background. Oh, my my bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're going to be talking about characters, um, just what we think makes a good character, who some of our favorite characters are, and just, yeah, chatting about characters. We all love characters, so I'm really excited to do this. Um, but I will let you guys introduce yourselves now. <laughs> I thought we said you were next, Zoe. Oh, I am. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Hello. I'm the dummy of the group. I'm Zoe from Red by Zoe. And I'm Haley from Haley and Bookland. <laughs> um, so starting off, what are we all currently reading? I am currently reading two books. Um, I'm almost about to finish Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay, which I really, really like. It's a um, story that's inspired by Jane Eyre. It's not like a retelling of Jane Eyre about a girl who is a serial killer. And it's wonderful. It's a really, really good book. And I'm really enjoying it so far. And I'm almost done. And then I am currently also rereading for the third time Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins so Reid. Um, <laughs> because I'm obsessed and I have a problem. And this time I'm annotating. So I have like tabs and like highlighted sections and everything. And yeah, I'm... I'm really enjoying it. This is the first time I'm like reading the physical book though, because the last times I listened to the audiobook. Um, and I'm noticing some like different things when you're physically reading it mm -hmm. that really get to me. So uh, yeah, and this is our um, book club book of the month for uh, March. So we're gonna be talking about it at the end of the month. Um, if you wanna read with us and join in on the live show on March 31st, right? On yes. Zoe's channel. Oh, my goodness, yes. Yeah. Um, but it's really good. I already made a video about it. I can't stop. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, so I am also currently reading Daisy Jones and the Six. I already finished reading. I read it physically the first time. And yes, I also annotated it. I have like half of it is highlighted. You can't tell right now. But yeah, there's a lot of very powerful quotes in here. And I'm listening to the audiobook this time. So the opposite of Hannah. And then I am currently reading for the first time. If We Were Villains by M. L. Rio, which is a murder mystery, Shakespeare inspired. Ooh. I am currently reading This Time Will Be Different by Misa Sugiura. I totally butchered that, but I really tried. Um, but I just got this arc today, actually, and I was really excited about it. It's about a Japanese girl who is living and not living in. She works at her family florist shop, but they're about to sell it and they're going to be selling it to the person, the family who put her family members in an internment camp during World War II. So... Mm -hmm. Obviously, the family is not really happy about that. So I'm really interested to see how this is going to go. And then I'm also reading The Forbidden Orchid by Sharon Bings Waller. So I'm listening to the audiobook for this. I just happen to be reading two things about flowers. I don't yeah. know how that happened. Like how many things do you have uh, about flowers? But... The second one sounds like a euphemism for... It does. It's, you know, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's set in Victorian times, I believe. And it's about this girl whose family like they're all named after flowers and her father hunts for these exotic plants and I think he goes missing I'm not very far into it but um she has to go and like find him and find this forbidden orchid as well so mm. that's where the title comes from <laughs> we are um also trying to figure out what our April book of the month is and we have a poll up on our Twitter which is at bookmarked club it is available to be voted on until I think 6 p.m. tomorrow. So you have 24 hours to Eastern Standard Time. So 24 hours from right now to go vote. I think right now Scythe by Neil Schusterman is winning, but we also have Nevernight by Jay Kristoff and The Near Witch by Victoria Schwab, if you want to choose one of those. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, so I, so we were basically just going to talk about characters, like I mentioned. Um, and the first kind of question topic, I guess, I just wanted to discuss uh, was how do you think you create a good character? Good as in well-written. I think you have to start with flaws. Mm -hmm. I think every good character has 
very specific and very powerful flaws. Like I think of my favorite characters like Evelyn Hugo or, you know, mm -hmm. Daisy Jones. They are majorly flawed, but it's also because of the fact that they own their flaws and they're not a Mary Sue type of character that they get stuff down despite their flaws and they power through it and they still like care about other people at the end of the day and also character development because you know leah on the offbeat by becky albertalli um leah was a very flawed character but she didn't get any better <laughs> and so i really dislike that so i mean there has to be like a driving force to the character they have to do stuff they can't have things just done to them yeah i said yeah. like three different things <laughs> I, I completely agree i think flaws are like the biggest thing for me um in whether and how i determine if a character is well written or not flaws and then drive like i have to know why you want what you want otherwise mm -hmm. i'm not gonna care like uh, the example I always go to is uh, Jude from The Cruel Prince because I I don't like her because a lot of people, she's an unlikable character, which I like unlikable characters. The reason I don't like her as an unlikable character is because I don't understand any of her motivation. And I don't mean like I don't agree with it. I mean like I just don't understand what it is. Like it feels extremely unclear to me. So I don't have any emotional investment in her and I need to have some sort of emotional investment in why you're choosing to do the things that you do. I need to understand what drives you. Um, and then I was going to say something else and I completely blanked on it. I don't remember what it was, but <laughs> well, we can go back to it. <laughs> um, I think that flaws are extremely important because for me, characters need to feel like they could be real people that mm -hmm. I could get along with or not even necessarily get along with, but that I could picture walking through everyday life. They have to have some aspect of re relatability for me. And obviously a lot of that comes in the form of flaws. I have so many, but like everyone, you know, <laughs> every human is flawed. <laughs> Thank you. Um, every human is flawed. So they look for that in other people, you know, and you want to see how, other characters can overcome those things. So I think for me, relatability is a major, major thing. But I think you need to consider the dimensions beyond what is going to be on the page and what is going to end up in the book as well. You need to have a whole history for the character that won't necessarily be in the book, but you can pull from it whenever you want. And as a writer, they would need to be seem like a real person for you, seem like a friend, someone that you actually know in real life. So then your or your readers rather can get to know them just like you did. Yeah, um, I, I remembered the other thing I was going to say. Oh, yeah, well, we're gonna... um, it was because you were talking about character development. And I like completely agree that character development is extremely important yeah. to writing a good character. Um, but I think that like it doesn't necessarily have to be that the character becomes a better person as the per like time progresses or the story goes on. I think that they just need to change or evolve yeah. in some sort of way. Like they can become worse. That's totally acceptable. Oh, yeah. Like that's still a really well written character. Um, but they just need to like, in some way grow mm -hmm. and i think that's what keeps a character like really stagnant versus a character mm -hmm. that's like fully fleshed out and realistic oh like april may in an absolutely yes nice she gets exactly. so much worse <laughs> she really does she becomes a terrible person <laughs> but i mean there was so much development and you understood mm -hmm. why she changed in the ways that she did yeah and I really like what um, N in the chat said, give them more than one interest. For example, yeah. she paints, that's all she does and talks about and thinks about. Yes, I, and the fact that so many interests of characters, they're all, you know, like this character loves to read and that's it. But like, where are people who love to like swim or something? No characters really like to do sports unless it's a sports book. I feel like no I, writers like to do sports. I, I mean, <laughs> you're like, write what you know, but also, I mean, know, totally writers agree. also have very varied interests. I have just yeah. read a book where the character, it wasn't about sports, but one of the main characters loved, um, he was a speed skater, Solitaire oh. by Alan Goldman. I didn't like the book, but um, he was a speed skater. So he did have like a varied interest. It was pretty, it was pretty great actually in that term, in those terms. But um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I agree. There should be different, different yeah. things. 
Like, um, are so multifaceted that yeah. you need to have that with a character too. So you can't just have that one dimensional interest and that's what they're absolutely defined by. You have to have something beyond that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, along the same lines, who are some of our favorite characters? If we want to talk about that. I think so many of mine are terrible characters. They're just ones that they're interesting to read about. I don't gen I don't really like the perfect characters. Mm -hmm. Um like Evelyn Hugo, I love Evelyn Hugo. April May also like I can't stop thinking about them and like thinking about how they would react in certain situations that are not having to do with the book at all. Like what would Evelyn Hugo do if she was like an astronaut or something? I don't know. Like how would she handle like I don't know, a plane crash like on a desert island, she would kick butt. Um, and I also love like Emma from uh, Jane Austen's Emma, because again, mm -hmm. she's a terrible character. Even Jane Austen said that she was a character that she thought only she would like. She didn't think any of her readers would find her enjoyable at all. Um, so yeah. Because yeah. Emma's real. Like she's just a yes. very real person. Yeah. She's so annoying, but like. Control it. Wait, do I just yeah. love controlling characters? <laughs> I think mean, that's all of my characters are very overbearing and very strong mm -hmm. personalities. Like they are not wallflowers at all. Yeah. Um, right now, all I can think of is pretty much every <laughs> character from Daisy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you cover those. But like I was, so I made my mom read the book too. So we listened to the audiobook together uh, the first time that we read it. And well, actually, we were listening to the first half together and then um, I finished the rest of it. <laughs> And then I went back and I re-listened to the whole thing with her. So um, she also listened to it. So yesterday I was talking to her about this and um, we were just talking about how the thing that makes all of these characters just so amazing is how she, how Taylor Jenkins Reid is able to make them so realistic Yeah. because at their core, most of them at least are pretty good people, but they're just really messed up or they've been through a lot of messed up things. And I think, those are my favorite characters, like people who are very flawed and they make a lot of mistakes. They've hurt people. They've done things they shouldn't have done. But at their core, they are good people who are trying to either better themselves or better the world or the people around them or something. Um, and so, for example, Daisy Jones and Billy and Camila, oh. all of the three of them with all of my heart and soul. Evelyn Hugo, absolutely. She is an absolute disaster of a person sometimes. Yeah. It's just so unbelievably well written. Um, I love Laya from An Ember in the Ashes. I think she's one of the best um, main uh, protagonists in any YA series, um, as well as Inej and Kaz from Six of Crows. Like, I just, I love them so much. Those are characters I think about like a lot. Like, I think about them all the time. All the time. Yeah. You're falling asleep. Literally, yes. That was me falling asleep last night. I was just like, damn. <laughs> damn yeah, <Daisy. laughs> I can't. Oh, my God. Um, I really love basically anyone in Six of Crows, particularly. I really love Nina mm -hmm. and Nikolai. And Nicol I can never say it. It's I Nikolai, it's right? Nikolai. Okay. Because I said it wrong and then people are yelling at me. So now I always get nervous. Um, I also really love Isabel and Vianne from The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. They are great characters, particularly I feel like Isabel. But both of them have like, they're trying, like you said, Hannah, they're trying to do good. I love when characters are flawed and trying to do good. Um, and that's what they're trying to do, but in a time where it's really hard to do that um i also oh i just had one and i literally just lost it um oh the book thief is what i was going to say the whole family from the book thief just I love death it. yeah I, love... I stand death amazing <laughs> oh um yeah i think those would be the ones that really stick out stick mm -hmm. out to me i'm probably forgetting some as well but once i like i I'm not really like you guys in the sense that I don't think about characters so much when I'm done with the book, but while I'm reading it, I get really attached to them. And then if I were to reread it, I would once again be like, oh, I love these characters. So it's hard for me to like think of specific ones mm -hmm. that I really, really love. Although I do I love really Neville and Luna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're great. 
See, like, characters mm -hmm. stick with me. Like, oh, same. I, I forget out. about the entire plot. I don't remember what happened in the story. But if I like a character, they stick with me. And I will literally never stop thinking about them. Yeah. And, like, obviously, we can talk about books. I mean, not books. Like, movies and um, TV shows, too. Like, those characters. Oh. Yeah, Suko, Like, my favorite character ever. Um, but what's a common trait that you see, like, among a lot of your favorite characters, if there is one? Or do you just, like, a very group of people. Can I just say um, something that someone had said in the mm -hmm. chat I think is relevant from Callie Rose. Um, characters should have conflicting traits. Recklessness doesn't mean they need to be hot tempered. Example, Ronan from the Raven Boys is hardcore, but he loves traditional Irish music. So I like that too. I think that's like, sometimes we have like the very strong characters like Selena Sardothian. Um, but like one thing I loved about her, okay, but like she was like supposed to okay i'm talking about the first two books because i love the first two books but the fact that she loved um shopping and she was like a girly girl but she also like was kind of kicked butt i really mm -hmm. like how multifaceted some characters are like they don't just have to be one archetype they're not just going to be like oh like he's the bad boy oh he put like um a cigarette between his teeth <laughs> but <laughs> he could also have like a soft heart you know you know, yeah. like Jim Carstairs. <laughs> he was a, he kicked butt, but he also played that violin so well. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> you, you, you go on with what you were saying. <laughs> I was just saying if there are any like common characteristics that you see among some of your favorite characters. I think that all of mine are snarky and sarcastic and sassy, but also very damaged. <laughs> so like relatable. Rude. Relatable. <laughs> <laughs> you like your stubborn characters, Haley. Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> like, every single one of your characters that you told me about, you're like, she's stubborn, and then he's stubborn. Like, she was going through all of her book characters that she was writing. And, like, They're I had stubborn in different me. ways. <laughs> but, like, the entire cast of characters was stubborn. It was like, I mean, yeah. that shows what you like, though. Just stubborn, <laughs> hard headed. Oh, God. Oh, Literally, that's just me. Yeah. <laughs> About you, oh um, I think I kind of said like earlier how I like characters who are good, like at their core, um, but have like a lot of flaws and have gone through a lot. I like broken people. <laughs> That's yeah, basically same. it. Yeah. I was no really... more traditionally broken and like whatever, whatever that first quote was from Daisy Jones. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I like I, I like broken people. Like I like people who have gone through a lot and are just trying to do better. Mm -hmm. um, I like people who are misguided and eventually learn, which is why I like redemption arcs so much, like Zuko. Um, and I also really like sarcastic characters. Um, yeah, that's, I think those are the biggest things for me. Mm -hmm. I think I really like ambitious characters, especially ambitious mm -hmm. women. I like soft boys and ambitious women. Um, <laughs> But I was just thinking like Emma and all of them, like they each have such a drive to them. And that's also, um, I read two books by Celeste Ng and they both have very ambitious mothers who had to put aside like their ambitions to have a family, but they still kind of regret having a family because they still wanted to. So I think it's so interesting just seeing like how women from different times have find, found ways to be ambitious. But I also do love like sarcastic characters. I did not enjoy them for a little bit because it seemed like every single protagonist was sassy like after Harry Potter and then there was Percy Jackson and then there was everybody from Cassandra Clare's books um so I was just like I want someone who like has no sense of humor at all um but I do enjoy a good funny character mm -hmm. um who are some of your least favorite characters oh yeah <laughs> Um, I think it's mostly like really bland characters or like one note yeah. characters who are just like an archetype or they don't progress in any way. But usually mm -hmm. I like, I can't remember any of them, most of them, because yeah. I might just stop reading the book because they're uninteresting and I have no, like we talked about this before the live show that um, Hannah and I are both very, I'm not sure about you, Haley, but Hannah and I are very character focused readers instead of plot focused. So that's why yeah, both of I us- I too. Oh yeah, that's why both of us um, remember characters so much longer than plot. And that's why we come back to the same books again and again. 
um, because we care about these characters so deeply. But I will keep on reading a book if I don't enjoy the plot, if I love the characters. Like the Raven Boys, it didn't have a really action-packed plot. It was all pretty slow going, but the characters, the core group of characters were so defined and so interesting to read that I love the whole series as a whole. That's why I don't think a lot of people who love plot will love the Raven Boys, but people who like, who have an affinity for interesting characters will like it. Yeah. I think for me, um, I think I've noticed that usually if a character is, I'm not talking about characters that are like poorly written. Cause like, I don't even count that as like not okay. liking a character. Cause like, that's just cause they were poorly written. I'm talking about characters that are well-written, but like what makes you not like a character? I think the thing I've noticed is that like, I will dislike a character, but like, it won't be like that intense until I see other people like defending them <laughs> or liking them. And I'm like, you did not understand this person at all. How dare you like them? So then I hate them more. Like for example, <laughs> which is, I know really petty and like dumb, but I do this. Um, for example, like Helene from An Ember in the Ashes. Yes. I can't stand her. Like I didn't like her to begin with um, because I think she's really self-righteous and I hate self-righteousness, but I think she's a well-written character. Um, and then I saw so many people saying like, oh my God, I love Helene with all of my heart. And I'm just like, no, like you can't, you can't love Helene. How dare you love Helene? <laughs> um, so I think honestly that influences me a lot, which it probably shouldn't, but it does. I have one, um, mm -hmm. Peter Kavinsky. <laughs> That's Get out of my house. I didn't enjoy him that much when I read it at first, but then I saw all these people like Hannah, who was like, I love Peter Kavinsky. And now I just have such a deep hatred for him because he, like the, 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 the least effort, he, he did not put any effort into that relationship. He, okay, he picked her up for school. Whoa, that's so, that's what- ever met a 17 year old boy? Yeah, and that's why John Ambrose McLaren is such a oh good my Oh my god. Every time. I'm just oh, saying, dear. that's another instance. I think that's that's the case. Like, I was like, eh, I don't really like that much. And then I saw this outcry of love. And just, no. Like, also, no. Book to movie adaptations, a lot of the time, the reader or the actor will make the character so much better. Like, I enjoyed Peter in the Netflix movie. I was saying, I thought he was kind of boring and like, I, oh, him, but I, he was in the movie. I was like, oh, you're lacking a lot of personality. <laughs> a lot of his bad personality. Yes, he was. Huh? But that's what made him a good character. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but like God. Snape, like Alan Rickman made mm -hmm. Snape so much better. Oh, for sure. And that's yeah. why a lot of people love Snape, but him in the book, nah, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say one that I hate is, I forget which one it is, but the one sister from Little Woman, the one who, can I spoil Little Woman? It's been out for thousands of years. <laughs> <laughs> can I spoil it? Is that I don't allowed? Know. Don't spoil it. Okay, well, she does a thing and it's really <laughs> rude. And if anyone did that thing to me, I would literally know. Wait, I feel like there's so about? many. Joe or May? I don't know which one it is. Oh, the other one, the bad, the the annoying sister. I don't know which sister. I need to look up the PBS adaptation. I think it's the PBS <laughs> adaptation, and then I'll know which one it is. But like, I cannot. Oh, but the character that I hate most of all, but I also don't hate for her because she's a really multifaceted character. But she gets me riled up. Is obviously Umbridge. I can't, mm -hmm. and that's mostly like. I would say more it. so movie umbridge. I literally, I just, I picture terrible things happening to her and it brings me great joy. <laughs> I cannot. It's Amy. People are telling me it's Amy. Oh, Amy. I, I was too. taking way too long to Google no it because I was getting distracted. Oh, sorry. I was talking <laughs> over you. How rude. But yeah, Amy. Um, anyone who does anything terrible in a book, I generally hate them. I'm sure there's so many more, but like you know who, who boils my blood, like absolutely. Like anytime someone tells me they like them, I'm like, I'm sorry, we can't be friends. Gail from the Hunger Games. <laughs> No. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely not. Absolutely yeah. not. No. They're like no, they were the love not. triangle. Um. No. Where was it? Katniss didn't love anybody. Okay. No, I'm sorry. I did not read the same book. Yeah. I... <laughs> Katniss didn't care for anybody, but I'm happy who she ended up with because True. he deserved love, but she didn't need anybody. <laughs> Root out in the end. 
Oh, God. Um, okay. Um, so did you have we... a question from the chat? Oh, yeah. If you have any questions, let us know because we want to focus a lot on the chat today because uh, we've kind of ignored you guys in the past. I'm sorry. I'm so it's sorry. It's just easier to keep up with Twitter because it goes so fast. Yeah. We uh, try, though. We had um, one that we came up with before, first role model, like bookish role model. Do you have anybody? I feel like the first thing that comes to mind is Hermione. Yeah. Probably. Hermione, definitely. Um, and also, what's her face from... What was the name of that book? I also need to remember the name. What was the sister's name in Magic Treehouse? <laughs> That's what I'm looking at! Annie? Is it Anne or Annie or something? I think it was Annie. Annie? I think it was Annie. That's exactly <laughs> what I was looking at. Honey. Oh my god. Amazing. Uh, but like, no, definitely. It was very just far. All the all the like strong young girls. The ones yeah. who all love to read too. Because I was reading and I was like, yeah, buddy. Um and definitely those two. And then there was the girl from um, The Beloved Dearly, which again, you guys don't know what book that is, but she no. had a pair of red Converse, high top Converse that she wore in the entire book. And she was such like a tomboy because I really wanted to be a tomboy when I was younger. I wasn't one, but I really wanted to be a tomboy. And that's why I, I like skateboard for a little bit. And then I like, I totally messed up my chin and it was a whole mess. But that was me telling myself that I am not a tomboy. Anyway. She was a tomboy. I wanted to be a tomboy. So I got a pair of red Converse and I wore them to shreds because Beautiful. she affected my life so deeply. I was in like second or third grade and I wanted to be, it was the shortest book, but I still remember that. She could cry in demand. I could cry in demand. We were the same person. Love it. Um, um, Abby Hayes from the amazing days of Abby Hayes was also yes. one of those other people. Yeah, she was one of my first role models. She wrote like an her pen, so right? badly. Yeah, purple pen. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I wrote a purple pen because of her. So did I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a lot God. of this stuff is like I try to mo like obviously that's what a role model is that you try to like model your yeah yeah. But I like tried so deeply to like take on all of their habits and quirks and stuff but I don't think I did at the end of the day I mean like I still wear Converse a lot of the time but I don't think that's because of my second grade role model maybe <laughs> it might have been it might have affected me but I wonder if like all of the characters that okay I wonder if there was somebody who had never like seen tv watched a movie or like heard a story about another person how would that affect their life versus someone who grew up like with TV or like with stories with characters that influence them? Like, how would we have been if we didn't read any of these books? Because like we said that like we didn't keep all of these quirks, but did it affect us in some way? I think that definitely um, I read a lot of like, oh, in children's books, a lot of them are pretty empathetic characters. And I feel like I became more empathetic, like even with Harry Potter, like, um, being there for like people of different backgrounds, like for the Muggleborns or for like half giants, just like being more open to other social groups. I think that influenced me in some roundabout way. But I think if it doesn't affect like who you are on the surface more so than how it affects your character. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's definitely true. Yeah. Like, there's no way that reading about all these characters when we were that young didn't affect us um, or didn't change us or shape us. Like I always say that watching Avatar The Last Airbender, which I watched since I was like seven years old or something like that, um, completely changed the way I viewed the world. Like I don't think that I would have viewed the world the way that I currently do, or maybe I wouldn't have had those opinions as young as I did had I not watched that show. Um, because those characters like, taught me so much about everything I know. Um, I don't know, who is calling me? Lizzie <laughs> McGuire, man, Lizzie McGuire. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, so I definitely think that's that's true. Yeah. I feel like it's like a nature versus nurture thing. Yeah, you know? that's what I was going for. I'm literally, gonna say, we're, just, we're just kind of going into a deeper it's psychological a whole, like, discussion yeah, here. Yeah, it's a psychological <laughs> thing. Like, 
it's yeah. if you grow up without media, how will you be? There's so many things that yeah. you can show off of, <laughs> but, but like that. all the like media. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, some people were asking favorite or first book crush. Um, Do you remember? Jacob Black? <laughs> Gilbert Blythe. Oh, I didn't my like God. Anna Green Gables, Who? but like he. Oh, Gilbert my God. From Anna Green Gables. Mm-hmm. It's great. He wasn't my first one, but heck yeah, he's he's a current one. I'll tell you that. Um, there was a character. Did you ever read um, Once Upon a Marigold? Mm-mm. Oh my gosh, it's like a fairy tale retelling. But that's the first like semi romance book I ever read, and I read it in third grade or something like that. I full on cried when I read that the first time. Like I think they. I don't even know if they kissed or not. Do they hold hands? Do they hug? I don't know. But I full on cried. I'm like, this is amazing. I love this. And this has this is why I'm the way I am today. But that, whatever his name was, I think it was a Princess and the Frog retelling. Hmm. But that prince in there, I loved him. I can't even remember him now. But that's why I love romance. Because <laughs> that one frog dude in third grade. I love it. Um, yeah, mine was absolutely Jacob Black, followed by Jace, and then Will. You yeah, Jace. And then that kind of died out. So. Yeah, do you have any current book crushes? <laughs> the only one I can really think of is, like, Elias from A Number in the Ashes, because, like, when I read that series, it kind of makes me, not that it's similar to those series that I read when I was younger, but it makes me feel that kind of like, oh my God, like this angst that you feel about those characters that you really only feel when you're a teenager. Mm-hmm. Um, or you don't feel it in the same way, I guess. Like that series makes me feel that angst. So I think Elias, I guess, would be that crush, but it's still not the same. It's not. It's really not the same. I remember being like so, I even made a whole video about like how to fall in love with fictional characters, whatever that video was. But I, a video about how to fall in love with fictional why, characters? Yes, I did. I don't know. watch it, but it's up on my channel. But that's when I was like a teenager and I full on like was in love with Will Herondale. And like same with like in seventh grade when I first read Twilight, I was in love with Edward Cullen. And I don't know, like, I like I don't even know how that happened and I could never like replicate that now that I'm older maybe because like adult books it's unless you're reading romance it's really hard to find like a healthy like a healthy relationship or like coming either they're like married at the beginning like they're already husband and wife or it's like a romance book where it's like full on I don't really want to stand that man I feel but. like I feel like it's different now like I mean mm. I think part of the reason that that like love was so intense at least for like you and I like us was because we were literally teenagers like yeah very young well. <laughs> and I don't think you can I don't think it's possible to be an adult and feel that level of like devotion and emotion yeah that you feel when you're like 12 or 13 years old because like that's like 12 13 14 like that era of your life is when you're like I hate my parents I hate this like I like want to fall in love and like I mean obviously not everybody feels the same way but like no matter what you just feel such intense emotion about anything um and so I think for us that translated into books and Mm -hmm. this romantic relationship or twilight or whatever um and it was just like so intense. So now the closest comparison I have to it is like when I read something like, I'm sorry, I'm gonna bring it up again, Daisy Jones and the Six. And um, I just like, I feel like, I feel like an emotional attachment to it because I relate to the story. Yeah. Um, so it's like, it's those types of things now that I find myself feeling like it's still not the same. I don't think I can ever feel that level of emotion again. Um, but it's just like such an intense feeling when I can find a book and like relate to the characters or the like plot or whatever happens in the story. And that's like the new version of that, I guess, for me. Um, so N said in the chat, we have more of an understanding of our emotions now than we did back then when we were teenagers. So mm-hmm. when things are off, we know and don't make excuses for it. Mm-hmm. I think that's kind of like I could not read Twilight again at this age and be like, oh yeah, that's a very healthy relationship. But I think I, now I fall in love with relationships more than I fall in love with like the man in the yeah, relationship. Absolutely. Like, that's such a supportive relationship. I love it instead of like that man 
he is like, oh, whoa. And like, yeah, you know, no. I love I how they support each other. <laughs> I think that's like exactly it. It's definitely me falling in love with the relationship that these people have with each other. I don't care about the individual people as much as I care about them like together. Um, yeah, for sure. But like bringing up Twilight, like I have literally been trying to reread this book. I didn't realize in July, it will have been a year that I've yeah. been trying to reread Twilight and I still haven't finished it. To think that like 12 year old me would read that book in a day and then read it again in the same day. And now I can't finish it within a year tragic uh, well Haley um you have a different opinion because you created your own character yeah. <laughs> I think that's different than finding one that. like in a book that's already written like you made your ideal man <laughs> I basically did um the love interest in twin travel novel is my favorite I love him so much. He is a great human. Um, but I also, as much as I love him, I do also really love the relationship between the two characters and the way that it developed. It's kind of like a um, inside scoop here, I guess. But it's like a they used to be friends when they were kids thing. So um, it's kind of, I like when there's like some lead up to the relationship, you know, and mm -hmm it happens organically and then it's a healthy relationship. So that is something that I tend to really enjoy. I feel like um, Warrior of the Wild by Trisha Levenseller. I just read that book and it had a very healthy relationship. So I really liked that relationship as well. But I am a lot like you guys where it's the relationship more so that I fall in love with now than the character unless like I do really, basically if you present me with like a snarky, cute boy, then I, I will usually love them, but not in the same way as when I was younger, definitely. Um, a question that we got, I know on Twitter and I saw earlier in the chat was, um, if the voice actors in uh, audiobooks affect your uh, perception of the character. Definitely. <laughs> we talked about this. We were before. talking about this before, yeah. <laughs> um, we thought of The Gilded Wolves by Roshni Chokshi, which I DNF'd. Hannah finished it. I tried starting the audiobook, and it just... The male narrator, it was just so drony, like a text-to-speech thing. Like It, it really like felt like you were having... Yeah. Like um siri read your texts yeah. like that's actually what it felt like except she has more emotion in her voice yes it was like he was being held against his will i was concerned but um another one that i personally don't like but people rave about this audiobook i didn't like the raven boys audiobook i didn't I like the narrator it. at all maybe it's because I i'm not used to southern accents oh he grew on me i think when i first oh. heard it, i was like what but then like no, I, I, I listened to so many of them I think it, was, it worked because, oh, I mean, it's the Raven Boys, so there was a big group of, like, boys. But yeah. when he was doing blues, though, I was just like... Oh, well, that's okay. the thing. Like, if you're not going to have... I like mul um, full cast audiobooks. Yeah. And I, if you're going to have, like, you're changing your voice for different characters, it needs to not make me cringe. Harry and Potter. I've... I was listening. See, I liked the Harry Potter one. You liked his Hermione voice? Who are you? Whose did you listen to, though? Jim Dale. Oh, okay, yeah. I liked the Jim Dale his one. His Hermione voice? Harry! That, yes. I do. <laughs> Maybe it's because I was familiar with the story, though. But yeah. I was just listening to the audiobook for Carry On, and I ended up putting it down. I'm not DNFing it. I'm going to physically read it. But I didn't like the narrator because I couldn't tell who the characters were. I couldn't tell the difference between the female characters. And that book has like quite a few perspectives. So I just kept on getting really confused. So I ended up deciding not to. But I just really love full cast audiobooks. Like, I think the characters in Daisy Jones, I'm going to physically read it before the live. But the audiobook made me fall in love with each and every one of them. I know we keep talking about Daisy Jones, but it's amazing. Yeah, the <laughs> so <one's> good. <laughs> um, but I feel like good narration can make me fall in love with a character that maybe if I had physically read it, may not have jumped off the page for me. So I'm interested to see what it's going to be like when I do physically read it. I feel like the opposite is more true for me. Like, there's obviously a chance that the audiobook will make me like the book more, but it's usually more likely that the audiobook will make me like the book less. Yeah. Um, because... 
I don't like, I really like imagining the voices for characters in my own head. And like, if I don't like the narrator of an audiobook, it'll completely ruin the characters for me. So I can't listen to it. Um, and oh, there was one that I was just thinking of that um, I can, oh, for example, um, I love the Night Circus. We all know this. Um, and then I physically read the book the first time that I read it. And then I listened to the audiobook the second time that I read it. And the narrator for the audiobook is Jim Dale. And I hated really? it. I hated it so much. Ooh. I thought the narration was absolutely awful. I thought that it ruined the entire atmosphere of the book. I thought it was just completely wrong, just absolutely and completely wrong. And I know a lot of people have listened to the audiobook and that's why they loved the book more. Like sometimes they read the book physically first and they didn't like it. And then they listened to the audiobook and they loved it. So I'm glad that like people have different um, opinions on it and people can like it based on different things. But for me, like if I had listened to the audiobook first, I would not like the night circus, which is just astounding to me. Um, Cause it, I just, I thought it completely changed the book and it just didn't fit. Um, and there was another one too that I now cannot think of, but yeah. I think it's way easier to do like a book, like to kind of, do a poor rendition of an audiobook than a good rendition. But I feel like nowadays they are putting way more work, way more yeah. attention on yeah, audiobooks sure. because of like Audible and like people getting audiobooks from the library and finding ways to, to I don't know. Um, so I think now it's more likely that newer book, I mean, The Gilded Wolves is a newer book and it, you didn't like that. So, but I feel like they're trying to do more full casts. So we have sure. like Katie, we have, um well the div the diviners that was only one wo wait that was only one woman right oh yeah but she's an amazing she's so good, though. she was in the daisy jones audiobook mm -hmm. yeah I'm so proud she's, of her. she's an amazing narrator though every time yeah. i do an audiobook that's narrated by her i don't remember her name yeah, but she's, boy. yeah she's wonderful mm -hmm. um so hers is just really really good that's what i was thinking of earlier um the one thing that i just don't like that people do in audiobooks sometimes is when they do really bad accents and like yeah i think it's the grisha books um the the accents are horrendous like I listened to part of one once and I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> it's not going to work because the accents are just so bad that you just cannot. I, I can't at all. I wonder what, I feel like the Vampire Academy audiobooks would also be like that because we have a lot of Russian characters and these people who don't can do Russian accents. But uh, anyway, <laughs> we should take another question from yeah, the chat. um there's a question here from damian jones do you think having more point of views in books makes it harder for you to connect with a single character as opposed to having one i think that can, it can you repeat that me. sorry oh sorry um i lost the question but it was basically do you think that having multiple point of views makes it harder for you to connect with the characters as opposed to just having a single point of view where you can really connect with that character i think it's the opposite um, i think it's the opposite too I think in a way it's the opposite, but it also needs to be done well and done sparingly. I've noticed this trend with fantasies where it's now you have like the peasant-esque character and that's the female usually, and that's the one perspective. And then it's dual perspective with a prince who they end up meeting. That How many of these have you read? Nerve. Literally, I have so many on my TBR right now that that is the description of them. There are so many of them right now. I don't know what it is, but I think that two for me, I don't love when it's dual perspective. I like more than that though. Like Six of mm -hmm. Crows, anything like that. I like to get to know the characters more. I guess I'm not really a fan of just having two points of view, but there are instances where I think it can be done well. Like, is the sun also a star dual perspective? It is, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And I really, I love that one. So I think that's one where it is done well, but I think that there needs to be a point to it. And I guess that it really does depend on the story and on the characters. It also depends on the writing. Like the, they have to have yeah. different enough voices because yeah. like, um, what was it? Divergent Allegiant. Was that the last one? Yeah. Triss and four had the exact same voice. I was, when I was reading it, I remember being confused and having to flip back to the title page to see who was the point of view at that point. Um, and like, we all know why she entered, like why she started having. Well, and you knew what was going to happen too, because happen. of that. How do yeah. we add 
multiple point of views when people are separated from one another. Spoiler, but I think they do need to have very unique and distinct voices from one another. And I think two or three is like the sweet spot. Like I think more than three point of views can get really confusing. See, I love like, yeah. a lot of different characters. Like I love having a huge cast with so many different characters and each of their voices. Cause I think if an author is able to do that well, then the book is just unbelievably well done. Like, it's yeah. really weird for them to do it well. So that's yeah, why true. So not a lot of people oh, yeah. attempt that in the yeah. first place. Yeah. I'm so sorry. if they do, it means there's like, I guess a chance that they are confident that they can do it pretty well. Yeah. Um, so like Daisy Jones has a huge cast, Six of Crows yeah. has a huge cast. A lot of my favorite shows like Game of Thrones, like I love having like a giant cast of characters. Um, and yeah, literally like all my favorite shows, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood and um, Avatar The Last Airbender, like all of them. I like a big cast of people. I think also, I think um, oh, sorry, what were we gonna say? No, you can go ahead. Oh, I just think that they need to maybe be together all at once at first to get to know each character and then kind of split off into different POVs. But I think it's just like what I was talking about, like the three like different storylines. So like I would like to hear from each person, but it's I like when they're not together at first and then they come yeah. together at the end. That's what I prefer. I like when they like are together and then like separate and then come together. I don't know. It's it's it all depends on the book. This is like <laughs> yeah. very subjective. I mean, like each book does it differently. So I'm just thinking of one specific book. So that's probably why. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that. One of my pet peeves, and this is why I wasn't a fan of What If It's Us by Becky L. Brutale and Adam Silvera, a lot of times you'll have authors that will come together that are writing a book together, co-authoring something. I couldn't think of the word at all. Um, but they always, like, it has, to, for it to be done successfully, they have to have a different enough voice. Because I kept on getting Arthur and Ben mixed up. I had, like, I could not tell who was different. And I was listening to the audiobook, and I'm pretty sure it was dual narrator. I don't know for oh, sure, wow. but I, hope it was. I couldn't tell like who was who. And the same thing happened with a book that's coming out in August that I just read, Hello Girls by Brittany Cavallaro and Emily Henry. And I liked both of those authors a lot. I've read stuff by them and really enjoyed it. But I felt like the two characters were way too similar. And in that case, one was completely overshadowing the other. So I need them to be different enough. And I think that that's where I struggle with co-authored books, because a lot of times their writing style does blend seamlessly together, which is great. But sometimes it's way, way, way too much. What if it does, does have two different narrators? Okay, I thought so. Up. Yeah. And I could not, could not tell who Ooh. they were from each other. Yeah. Um, so do we want to play our game now? For we want to play a game? <laughs> yeah, so um, we had the idea to play um, Mary Kiss Cliff. Is that what we're doing? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mary Kiss Cliff for, um, a, for like a fun little game since it's character based. So if you guys would like, just send us names of characters in the chat and each of us is going to pick one. And if you don't know how to play this game, basically um, you take three characters and then you decide which one you would marry, which one you would kiss and which one you would shove off a cliff. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can send us whichever characters you'd like and we're each going to pick a few and then... Let you know it doesn't have to be it. romantic no either. it doesn't have to be romantic it's platonic no. too. Fun. yeah we can care. So like mary is like you want to have like a long-term relationship with yeah them, like so your like best, best friend, friend. Yeah. kiss is just like i like you we'll like go out for coffee or something and then mm -hmm. cliff is like i hate you please die so it can be platonic just like long term short term or no term you know oh okay. wow we have a lot already I, okay like to pick one first? me yeah. The challenge is sure. going to be to find one that we all... I'm going to pick Gansey. Okay, I will pick Remus Lupin. Oh, okay. God. I didn't realize we were all picking one. I was ill-prepared. <laughs> <laughs> no one prepared me. Uh, please hold. Uh, Daisy Jones. Oh, no! <laughs> oh. Okay, what do we have? Gansey, Daisy Jones, and... Remus Lupin. Remus Lupin. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Um, you go first, Hannah. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Okay, uh, I'm gonna marry Daisy Jones because I love her with all of my heart. 
Uh, I'm gonna kiss Gansey because he's my fave. And I'm so sorry, Remus Lupin, but I'm gonna shove you off a cliff. Get out of here. I mean, no, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not spoiling today. <laughs> Haley, you go. Um, I would marry Daisy and uh, kiss Lupin and Cliff Gansey. Sorry. I would cliff Daisy Jones. I would kiss Gansey and I'd marry Remus Lupin. I yeah, love Daisy Jones, but like I wouldn't want to like spend my life with her. She's my idol, my idol. Well, then there you go. That's why you would marry her. I, I would just. I mean, she doesn't have to die. She's a resilient lady. She's cliff <laughs> jumping. It's fine. <laughs> she would. Let's be real. Um. Okay. okay let's pick another one. Yes. Uh, I'm trying to find ones that we've all. Augustus. I know. That's the Augustus. What's his face? Uh, Augustus from what? From uh, Falcon Our Stars. What oh, is oh, Stars. Stars. Sorry, I'm thinking. I saw August Flynn. Someone said August Flynn, so I was oh. thinking August. When oh. I was it. Um, Katniss Everdeen, Evelyn Hugo. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> yeah. You first, Hannah. Um, I'm gonna marry Evelyn. I'm gonna kiss Katniss, and then I'm gonna cliff August. I mean, August, Augustus. There you go. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's the same. <laughs> so. I'm like, you go. I would marry her. I'd be Aww. her servant. It'd be fine. It'd be great. Okay. Yeah, I'd do anything for Evelyn Hugo. Um, okay. Draco Malfoy. Frodo Baggins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so ill prepared for this. Uh, Nina. No, Cass. Cass. Zoe doesn't know Cass. I would Cliff Cass. I don't oh, know who he is. Right. Dang I would it. marry Frodo. No, I'd kiss Frodo. I'd marry Draco. He could give me the life I want. <laughs> um, are those the three that we're doing then? Yeah. Okay. Then okay. Um, I would marry Kaz. I would, which would not go well, but it's fine. Um, I would <laughs> kiss Draco, I guess. And sorry, Frodo, but like, no. you have been to Cliff before. It's yes, fine. he. I don't know <laughs> Lord of the Rings, so we well, each never don't seen know it? No. <gasps> Zero interest. What? This is the song what? I was singing to you earlier. Dun, oh. da, 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 Probably why I was going to sing this song earlier, though. That's true. <laughs> um, I would marry Draco because I feel like we could be an iconic Slytherin couple. <laughs> you really would. The universe. <laughs> and I would put him in his place. You would. Like, absolutely. You would not um, get away with anything. And then I would kiss Kaz. Yeah. Like that's uh, perfect. Um, okay, Star Carter. Laura Jean. I was just going to say Peter Kavinsky. <laughs> yeah, we can say him too. Off the cliff. Um, <laughs> I yeah, can't. I'll, go, I'll go with Peter Kavinsky. I can't. I don't know. Okay, well, I would marry Star. Um, kiss Peter and then I'd kill Lara Jean because I find her very annoying. <laughs> Sorry. I would marry Lara Jean because she could make all of my meals and she would be like so, she'd be so loving. Um, also, she'd give me space. True. But I would kiss Star and then Peter Gavinsky go, bye bye. See, I, you very hard. I love all of them and I don't want to push any of them off of a cliff. But you have to. Who would you Just cliff? Do it. Okay, fine. I would marry Lara Jean. Oh. No, I would. I would marry Star. I would kiss Peter, and I'd probably push Lara Jean off a cliff. I'm so sorry. I don't. Right? Hate her. I don't hate her though. I love Lara Jean. I don't hate I'm her. A lot offended. I she got so much better in the last book. Like that oh, was for sure. Story. Yeah, one hundred percent. Her I character her development trajectory. was great. Yeah, her trajectory. She's gonna get so much more mature. I want to. Okay, I want a book of her coming out of college, like all yeah. mature. Peter Kavinsky is gone. Bye bye. And then she's just a fierce lady. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I totally agree. Um, um Will. Jim. Jim. <laughs> Will. <laughs> oh God. Uh. Uh, I haven't even read that. Ba, 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 ba. This takes me so much longer than it takes you guys. Why does it take me so long? I don't know because I'm indecisive. You know this about me. God. Do you want me to pick for you, Haley? Yeah, I'll just pick someone for me, please. Okay. Um, Kale. <laughs> Perfect. 
That makes it really Kale easy, then. Oh, I forgot who else we picked. Wait, no, I'll pick someone else. It was Will, Jem, and Kale. No, okay, Alec. Alec Lightwood. Mm-hmm. Oh. I would marry Jem, obviously. I would kiss Alec, obviously. And then Kale. No, Will is the last one. You said Kale. No, I, said, I switched. Oh. Yeah, oh. I switched Kaylee. But then I would cliff Alec. I'm sorry. Magnus will save him. It'll be fine. Um, I don't know, Haley. What would you do? I think mine would be the same. I don't remember the characters that much. I don't remember which ones Jim and which ones Will. I'm not even. Oh <laughs> Will's not the even soft. Gonna Will's a bad boy, and Jim. Oh, the then soft Will. Boy. Will is the one that I would marry. Yeah, but I know you would marry Will. You don't. You would not like Jim. No, probably he's too not. nice for you. <laughs> Fine. He's too much of a good person for but your Hannah, early I'm attitude. Huff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 so many oh, people baby. said that they thought Haley was a Hufflepuff in her sorting video. And have you met her? Have you listened to this live show? Do you know who she is as a person? <laughs> She's not a Hufflepuff. Honestly, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, yeah, I'm not a Hufflepuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't care if I like animals. I'm not a Hufflepuff. <laughs> What was yours, Hannah? Uh, I don't know. This is really hard for me. <laughs> I was giving you time. <laughs> okay. I would ki- I would marry Will because, like, that's already been set in stone since like 2014, um, and <laughs> before that, for sure. Um, I would. I would actually. You know what I would do? I would. Yeah, I would marry Will. I would kiss Alec, and I would cliff Jeff. I'm locking off of this chat. Bye. Listen, okay, I love Jem with all of my heart. And if we're talking just the Infernal Devices series, it would be Alec who would have to leave. But like, including the new series. I haven't read the latest, latest book. I don't know what Jem, he does. I mean, it's not like he did something in that book, but it's just like Jem in the newest series. I just don't care anymore. He's just there. He's there. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm not as emotionally invested in you. Whereas with Alec, I'm still emotionally invested in him, so. Next one. Professor Gilderoy Lockhart. <laughs> Thank you, Anne, for suggesting that. <laughs> um, Triss. Ooh. Um, <laughs> let's just pick all. Hey, what? Which one do you say? Luna Lovegood. Oh, Mary Luna. Yeah. Excuse me. When there is Professor Gilderoy Lockhart <laughs> in your midst. <laughs> I would honestly I would kiss Gilderoy Lockhart because I hate Trish yeah. that I would yeah. for sure. So I agree 100 <laughs> percent Mary Gilderoy Lockhart. No. <laughs> Obviously. He's married to himself. Luna. He's in a very committed. Yeah, it'd be a very open relationship. I could do whatever I wanted. <laughs> oh, okay. Do we want to do one more before we do yeah. like of the week and stuff and wrap up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um Voldemort. You can't put Voldemort in there. The answer is so easy when Voldemort. Tom Riddle in the second movie. Oh, the actor. <laughs> we'll do do one with all bad ones. Yeah, Umbridge. Okay. Oh, who's my bad one? Oh, Four. I mean, she's bad to me, so I'm not gonna pick her. Um, <laughs> Rowan. <laughs> I would marry okay. second movie Tom Riddle because me too. <laughs> like I would have been that. That's really bad to say, but like I would too. Oh my god! <laughs> if oh, we're just going off the actor, yeah. <laughs> Him as a person, no. Oh uh, yeah, exactly. And then what was the other one? Umbridge and Rowan. I guess I would kiss Rowan and then Cliff. Yeah, I could not kiss him. I would literally rather die. Unless it was like she put the cat up to her face. Can it be? What's his name from a very Potter musical? That Umbridge? That <laughs> one I'm marrying. Umbridge Smash. <laughs> oh, yeah, buddy. I mean, I would marry him too. What's his name? Joe something? I don't know. Something great. Him. Also, he was Voldemort. So there we go. Yeah. <laughs> um. I would marry Rowan because lesser of all the evils. Um, oh, I hate Umbridge. I understand that he murdered a bunch of people, so that's very different. <laughs> but she literally would, she makes me want to die. 
I the reason, I think the reason she's worse in some ways worse than Voldemort is because Voldemort is at least explicit with his like bigotry yeah. and hatred. She's not. She pretends like she's a good person and she has this like guise that she's uh -huh. doing the right thing. And those are my least favorite type of people. Like if you're gonna That's be awesome. absolutely terrible, I can at yeah. least deal with you. But oh, she's Don't also so like she could be a real person. Obviously, yeah, Voldemort couldn't really, but she could be a real person. And it's just a lot for me. I love Princess Simone said, y'all y'all over here trying to save Tom from himself. Yes, we get to him before. <laughs> no, of course, because that's how that works. That's how it works. He wouldn't. The moment he set eyes on us, baby, we'd perform him. <laughs> yes, it's it's the the it's Joe Walker. Joe Walker. Yeah, no, I saw that. Oh, goodness. Uh, Is it second movie, Tom Riddle? Yes, yeah, second yeah, movie, Tom Riddle. Also, sure. Joe Walker as either. Technically, technically, you would just be marrying or kissing a Horcrux. So, yeah. Okay, so Ew, I look 16. Okay, Wait, I take okay. all this back. I take it back. I'd marry Rowan because uh, whatever. And then I would kiss Umbridge. And then I'd kill. I, I mean, I'm not. He's a, he's a child. So, thank you. I need to he's kill Umbridge. Now. No matter what. Yeah, we're talking about the actor, so it's fine. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Do we have everything? Yeah, I think so. Do you want to talk about our booktuber of the week? Yes, I do. Boy, howdy. Let's get started. Okay, so our oh, booktuber howdy. of the week is Melanie from Mel to the Annie. Um, I asked her for a bio before this, and she thankfully provided me one. So I'm going to let you all know a little bit about Melanie. Her link is also down below in the description if you want to follow her. Also, check out her Goodreads because she's one of the top Goodreads reviewers in the United States. It's amazing. I really enjoy following her on Goodreads. Um, but her bio, she adores rainy days, video games, coffee, ASMR, tattoos, and making people smile. She is Filipino and pan, and she's been reviewing on Goodreads and her blog for a very long time. But this January, only a couple of months ago, she finally decided to start her very own booktube channel. So wow, she's already very good at making videos for only being at it for what, two and a half months? Amazing, a superstar. She reads pretty much a 50-50 split of adult and YA books, but mostly reads all things sci-fi fantasy, which is also good. You get some recommendations. And I need that because I only read contemporary. And she always tries to put on emphasis on reading diverse own voices authors. So Yay! Please check her out. I love yep. her. Her link is in the description box, so you can go and check her out now if you'd like to. Um, but yeah, I think that pretty much wraps us up for today's chapter. Thank you for sticking with us with changing the date of the live show for this week. Um, I'm going to be in Texas tomorrow, so couldn't do it tomorrow. Um, but yeah, and next week we're going to be on Zoe's channel back at our regular time on Friday. Friday. Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yes. And I don't know what we're talking about next week. Do we know what we're talking about? Um, next? Reading outside of your comfort zone. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. Outside of your comfort zone. So that should be fun. Um, but yeah, I think that is pretty much it. So the, the poll. Oh, we right. Do the poll on Twitter. Yes. We also have the poll on Twitter going for our book of the month for April. So if you want to go and vote on that, um, please go ahead and do that. Uh, you can go and check out our Twitter. But yeah, that pretty much covers everything. So thank you all for being here and for interacting with us. And we will see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.